What's happening, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Today, Andrew and I are going to talk about forms. Why are they the same and different when they are both the same and different? And it's a really confusing title. It mm -hmm. only makes sense in hindsight. So if you stick around, you will understand what <laughs> we're talking about. And it's something that most of you have probably at least been aware of, if not experienced. And it'll be a good conversation. Mm, I think so. If you are new to what we do, you should go to whistlekick.com. This place you're going to find all the stuff that we're working on, all the different projects and products, including our store. That's where we keep the products. Makes sense. Store, products, mm -hmm. right? And over there, you're going to find everything from apparel. We've got shirts on. There's a hat. You've got training programs. You've got event signups. Mm -hmm. All kinds of cool stuff there. If you use the code PODCAST15, you're going to save 15% of Almost everything, a couple exceptions, but very few. While you're over there, you might hit the link to go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com because, yes, this show gets its own website. It's so important it gets its own website, and we don't name things in any kind of strange way. We give, give you really easy names. We've brought you well over 700 episodes. We are in our eighth year of doing this show. Why? To connect, educate, and entertain the traditional martial artists of the world. If you want to show your support for our efforts, please consider contributing to our Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. Maybe share this episode with a friend who like really digs forums. And you're like, you know, I think you should check out this episode. These guys have some interesting stuff to say. You could also consider checking out our family page, whistlekick.com slash family. It's not like it's a family friendly version of what we do because everything we do is family friendly. It is instead a complete list of all the things you can do to support us from the paid to the free, the involved to the quick, and we also give you some bonus behind the scenes sort of content over there that you won't find anywhere else. It's kind of like a, a similar Patreon that you don't have to pay any money to get into. Forms. Now, we both love forms. I very much love forms. And I'm sure that there are people out there who are going to watch this episode and they're, they're at this point, they're trying to decide if they're going to want to check out the rest of this episode because maybe forms are not something they're as passionate about as you and I. And that could be. What we're going to talk about today isn't form specific. It is about the overlap, the relationships between different martial arts. Mm -hmm. And there might be a little bit of history lesson in here too. Mm, history. Kind of fun. Yeah. We've had a number of guests who have espoused the importance of mm -hmm. martial arts history. Uh, the one that comes to mind most notably, Hunchy Bruce Jutnik. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Spent a huge portion of his episode. Uh, um, berating is the wrong word because it suggests <laughs> a negative connotation, but just uh, um, almost pleading. Please learn your history. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> so this episode came to me. Okay, I'm going to back up. That's fine. So... If you're a new listener or of the show, you may not have heard my episode, my interview episode, but I started out studying Gojuru mm -hmm. Karate and then Shotokan mm -hmm. Karate and now Shoruru. And those are all exactly the same. They just have different names, right? Well, not quite. A hundred percent the same. Yeah, Everything okay. is the same from one to the next. No. But there are, are a lot of similarities between their forms, yeah. which got me to thinking like this is so like it, it made it difficult mm -hmm. learning some of the the new quote versions of these forms. Yeah. Um, they have different names mm -hmm. because Shotokan is a Japanese style and Gojiru and Shorinru are Okinawan styles, so they have Okinawan names. Mm -hmm. And so you know, a lot of those names got changed when it moved to Japan because they didn't want an Okinawan name for a, a form because there was some little bit of politics, politics stuff there, right? Stuff, yeah. Um, but if you look at them, they can look nearly identical, but not the same. And so that really got me to thinking, oh, hmm, this is interesting. And when you and I started talking about the curriculum we were going to teach at All In Weekend, mm -hmm. I had this idea for a class, which I got from Ian Abernathy. Um, who's to, been on the show. Who's been on the show to kind of highlight the differences in some of these forms and you said something interesting to me, with the, which I didn't know, because I've never really been a Taekwondo practitioner. And your comment was, we do have a lot of Taekwondo people coming to All In Weekend. And I said, 
Yeah. So, so what? So what? And you said they don't have that in Taekwondo. They're for the most part all the same. And I was and I was like, that blows my mind because all I know is Okinawan and Japanese karate. And so I thought, you know what? This might be a good episode to talk about why there are these differences in the Okinawan and Japanese martial arts within their forms and why they don't have that issue in Taekwondo. Right. So let, let, let me explain a little bit of the context because not, not everyone who's going to be checking out this episode has trained in a whole bunch of different things. Yeah. Right? Some of you have. You're going to be nodding along. I've trained in a variety of styles of karate. I've trained Taekwondo. Uh, ITF, Taekwondo specifically. I've done a bunch of different stuff, okay? We could take Shotokan mm -hmm. Karate, and I could train, and actually I did, earn, earned, uh, earned some rank in Shotokan back in the day, loved it, and I could take the forms that I learned, and they'd probably be a little bit different from the way you learned your Shotokan forms, mm -hmm. especially if we're talking slightly different lineages, different organizations, yep. right? Because it doesn't matter what you do and how close you try to stay to the exact thing you were taught, there are going to be some differences. Mm -hmm. Do you want proof? Uh, has your instructor ever stopped correcting you? Make this tweak here. Make this adjustment here, right? We are all with our forms, or really anything we do in martial arts, chasing this invisible, not quite tangible goal. We're always reaching for it. And if we think of of a form specifically, we think of um, Taikyoko Shodan. Okay? Yep. Uh, um, a not quite universal, but very, very close low block punch, low block punch, low block punch eight times. Yeah, yeah. Right? Many of us have had that. I've had it in, in different schools, given even different names. Even if it's almost the same, it's almost. The yeah. same. Now, over on the Taekwondo side, you have a little bit less fracturing there, right? As evidenced by the fact that you say Shotokan Karate, Shorinru Karate, mm -hmm. Gojuru Karate. While there are organizations within Taekwondo, and we do have WT and ITF and um, what's the other one? that I'm, I'm thinking of. There's a, a big organization that will come to me. It's a handful. Yeah. And culturally, people are less prone, in my observation, to say, I train this style of Taekwondo. I train this style of Taekwondo. Yeah. Yeah. Now, specifically, the people that came to All In Weekend, the majority of the folks who were engaged in Taekwondo that came to our event are practitioners of ITF Taekwondo. And ITF Taekwondo has something that very, very few martial arts have a book that tells you exactly how to do it. Mm. And that means any discussions, if you're at a shore new class and there's debate as to how to do this, that, or the other in a form, the final arbiter is the person running the school, Correct. the person of the of, of rank, or maybe mm -hmm. they defer that to, you know, this person knows forms and has a better mind for it. But it usually comes down to a person. The instructor, how does he want it done? How many generations is that mm -hmm. person from the person who made the form in that style? Yeah. More than a few. Anybody ever played the game of telephone when you were <laughs> a kid? You know it doesn't take very long. Whereas in ITF Taekwondo. We got a book. What does the book say? Yeah. And I've observed this many, many times. Now, that doesn't mean that every ITF school does this. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that interpreting the book isn't uh, without issue because sometimes you're looking at these still photos and you're going, huh? Mm. What, what is what is Yeah. Uh, and, and you get six of you and you're off in the corner and Try you're to doing a move. And you're like, all right, do that. And like, ah, does that look right? And you get posed and you're holding the book, right? I've done this. I've seen this done. Mm -hmm. Happens all the time. And I think that there is something both really kind of cool about both ways. Yep. Because yep. let's face it, you can't have progress without change. And if you have a idea for improving a form, you have to change it. Yep. Okay. But there's also something to be said that over here, we've got this form that is as standardized as it kind of possibly can, can be. Get, yeah. And that's really cool too. Yeah. 
you know, from the the karate side, there are instances, there are examples of some of the founders of these styles teaching a certain form this way. And then years later, teaching the exact same form a different way to someone yeah. else. Yeah. So which one's quote unquote right? The, I mean, he taught it this way here and this way over here. And, you know, I'm not an expert historian and I don't, I'm not saying this is the reason. Um, I think it could be a reason. Everybody's body moves differently. I mean, yes, to some degree, everybody, you know, my arms go up and down, but you know, some people have, have, uh, you know, limitations. Here's a perfect example. We'll take the kata for a shorin ru called chinto, which mm -hmm. in Shotokan would be gankaku. Mm -hmm. And in the form, there is a, a place where you do an X block, you bring it down and you do a double jump front kick. Mm -hmm. My instructor has bad knees. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't teach a double jump front kick. He does a front kick from the back leg, puts it down, and does another front kick from the from what is was would be the back leg. So still two kicks. Yep. But he teaches it that way because he has physical limitations and can't teach an mm -hmm. actual jump. And he let me know that that's what it would be, but this is how he does mm -hmm. it. Every student coming up in the school doesn't learn the jump double jump front kick because he can't do it well. And it's not being modeled for that. Correct. Now, let's say a student comes through the ranks, becomes a black belt, earns her rank, and goes on and opens her own school and starts to teach that form. Yep. Are they going to teach the double jump front kick? Their instructor never did it. Some of them might. Maybe. At least some of them won't. And now we have a split. So now we look at Gishin Funakoshi taught this student how to do this form this way. Mm -hmm. He goes off and teaches all of his students. It becomes that way. Years later, he's teaching this other student who perhaps has this limitation. Sure. He teaches him that way. That person goes off and teaches his students. They're doing it a different way. Yeah. And I find that really fascinating and kind of cool. Um, it came up recently when a friend of the show, Karen Chandler, mm -hmm. she visited my school and she is a Shorenru practitioner, mm -hmm. but a different lineage of Shorenru. And they have a kata wansu. And she did it for me. She performed it for me. And it was recognizable as the one we do, but still very different. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what got my wheels turning as to, like, why is it different? But it's still the same. You could see them side by side, and you'd recognize them. Now, there are plenty of videos, if you check out on YouTube, of this very comparison happening in real time. You get somebody from you know, this style, this, I've seen some as with as far as three and they do it at the same time and they, and they, they adjust the pacing so that they are at any given time, you'll see what each of them is doing related to the other. Yeah. And it's super cool. And we're going to put it in the show notes because okay. I know of a specific YouTube video that does this. Nice. Wataru, Shotokan and Weichiru, I think. Nice. The same form. I will, we'll put it in the show notes. Okay. I'll make sure it's in there for Julius. It. And so you're you're talking about this being different and the same and how interesting it is. And I and I want to come back to something that I said that I think is critically important. You can't have progress without change. Mm -hmm. So if we take the example of Funakoshi, mm -hmm. or let's let's imagine all of them, mm -hmm. are they not going to improve the thing they invented over time? The idea that the founders of these styles, who most of whom did not want to be considered founders of styles, let's mm. remember that too, would invent a thing, share the thing, and never improve the thing beyond the first time they shared it is so ridiculous to me as to be laughable. I mean, Funakoshi said directly there needs to be change in karate. I don't remember which book it was, but he absolutely said... It could have been Karate do Kyohan. I'm not sure. Or my way of... I don't remember. There's Karate Principle, 20 Principles. Um, so what do we do with this thought process? As an intellectual or academic mm -hmm. exercise, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. Right? Um, you know, and, and I've got to throw out this example because I, I took the time to, to do the, the research, right? We talked about this a little bit. 
um, there's a form in Taekwondo that I learned that is so close to another form that I learned that my brain cannot internalize both versions. Mm -hmm. I learned Nahanshin, the Ishin version of Nahanshin, which is very close to Teki Shodan in, in other schools, Nai Fan Chi, mm -hmm. depending on where you're training. And in ITF Taekwondo, it's called Poet. And it's the same movements. Mm -hmm. Starts in a, the opposite direction, but my brain can't do both. Now, if I'm with people who know it and they walk me through it once, I'm good. Because I'm making a, a, a mm -hmm. small modification. It will not retain. It's 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 not in there. Yeah. I can I can do the hunch. <laughs> Can't do poem. Interesting. I can cram for it for a testing or, or yeah, something yeah, if you like had that. to. It's it I can but it doesn't stick. Yeah. Because it's trying to, it's that close mm -hmm. to my brain. And I can relate completely because I had that issue going from Gojiru, not so much from Gojiru to Shotokan, but Shotokan to Shorinru. Yeah. Um, and Shorinru and Gojiru share kata as well. Mm -hmm. like, like three totally different styles. It, you think of them as a triangle and they all kind of have this, yeah. the same sort of stuff. Yeah. So beyond the academic exercise there, I think there is something to be said for. You, you talked about body differences. Mm -hmm. you, maybe there are limitations. Maybe they're not. Just we're all structured differently. You and I are built differently. Mm -hmm. We're going to perform differently. We're going to spar differently. We're going to do the same form differently. Some people look at that and they're like, oh, that shouldn't be. You should be standard. I think that's an asset. I do too. Because it gives us some non-common ground from which to learn from each other. If you have spent a whole bunch of time learning... Pick a form. Pasai or Basai. Okay. If you've learned Pasai, Basai, I learned as Basai Dai, mm -hmm. and you love that form and you want to make it better, I would suggest that you should look at different people doing it in different styles mm. of martial arts because then you can see little details. Little details. You're like, oh, I like how they do that there. Doesn't mean you change your form. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you're throwing everything out and you're doing it this way now. But if you've been training for a long time and if you love forms in the way that Andrew and I do, you know that it's those tiny little details and nuances, as we've called it on the show a number of times, the space between the moves yep. that often makes what you do, it's the difference between good and great or you know second yep. place and first place. And the more examples you have to look at and to model after, I think the more good stuff comes. Up. Yeah, yeah. Going back to the Taekwondo book, it was written a lot earlier than I had realized. Mm -hmm. I think you looked it up. It was 80, 83. 83. Um, and there are very few texts about the Okinawan and Japanese mm -hmm. systems. And again, I'm not a historical expert. I don't know that this is the case. But most of those styles came from Okinawa mm -hmm. and then, then migrated to Japan through sure. Funakoshi and, and others. But the island of Okinawa was destroyed during World War II. So if I was a, a founder of one of those styles and wrote lots of stuff down, it's entirely possible it didn't survive the it's war. Probably not there anymore. So we don't, you know, we, I say we, the, the, that those styles yeah. don't have those texts like a 15 volume encyclopedia of stuff because that was written a lot more sooner than I had realized. Yeah. And it, it leads us to that, that, that question again. And I think we'll, we'll kind of wrap here mm -hmm. because we're not making a judgment. And I think no. it's important that people realize that we're not saying this is better. That is better. We're saying that both are very interesting. And they create something that is um, fascinating to me. In the same way that if you went to a Shorinru school elsewhere, other side of the country, you talked about someone who lives close by. I mean, yeah, she's an hour, hour away. Her yeah. is different. Mm -hmm. Not super different, but different enough that you could not just step in and test mm, yeah, under sure. the same material, right? Nope. Nope. A little different. If you went to another country, same thing, right? Like, it's not like you guys are just randomly, bizarrely different. No, that's just kind of how it is. Whereas, theoretically, 
if I could remember Poem <laughs> and the other forms, I could travel to another ITF school. Mm -hmm. And if they were holding to the curriculum as written in this encyclopedia, I would probably be able to get spun up relatively quickly. Yep. And if not have my current rank honored, test for rank mm -hmm. pretty quickly pretty and, and, and yep. in an escalated, most likely an escalated timetable. And that's not just in the US, that's fairly global everywhere. among those doing uh, ITF. And by the way, the, the flavor of Taekwondo I was forgetting was ATA, mm, yeah. which is a very large organization. In the US. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the other question this leads to is why? Why did we do this episode? Because I think it's cool. I think it's really neat to look at these different versions of the same form. Yeah. And and I would, if people feel comfortable with it, once we post this episode uh, on our Facebook group, if you would like to do a video of yourself doing one of your forms, because maybe you do it in a way that you haven't seen that's unique, post it. I think that would be great. Especially if it's the form that we're gonna do the, the triple split on. Yeah, which is Pasai or yeah. Basadai. If, if you do a version of that, like let's let's get it in the Facebook group. Let's yeah. look at it. Ours is definitely the opening sequence is different. Though the last three quarters of it will look familiar. I've to never everybody. seen anybody that does Pasai the way I learned Basadai. Yep. And I did it as Basadai and Shotokan. Mm. And then now I'm in Shoru doing Pasai. And it is the opening sequence is very different. So if you feel comfortable, post yeah. it in the group. That'd be really cool. And if you're not, that's okay. You can still observe. And you can still kind of look at these splits and understand, hey, this is kind of cool. This is this to me is kind of um, martial arts archaeology. Yeah, you're you're digging in, you're looking, you're like, okay, how did I can see how they would go from this to this? More importantly, do I have a theory as to why they went from this to this or that to there? You know, right? Like we talk often, the why matters. Yeah, ask why, come up with theories. They don't have to be. Right. Awesome. Cool. Good it's stuff, fun. man. Listeners, viewers, thank you. Make sure you're following us in all the places that you might want to follow us. We are on YouTube. We are on Twitter. We are on Facebook. We are on Instagram. We are on Twitch. I'm doing more with Twitch and First Cup. We're also at whistlekick.com. That's where you're going to find the store. Don't forget. Uh, podcast one five to save 15% on any of the things we've got going on over there. There's, there's new stuff coming all the time. In fact, I've got a new product sitting down here. We're going to talk about it at the Q and a, when we do that a little bit later, if you're watching this months into the future, there are still new things because it's a constant process because it's something that I enjoy doing. Ever evolving. Whistlekick martial arts radio is the place to go for all of the show notes. Like if you want to check out that video that we're going to put up, that's the place to go for that. So make sure you're checking out that website periodically. Uh, something else to keep in mind, people, this keeps coming up and people keep being surprised. We do transcripts because then you can search later. What was that episode Andrew and Jeremy did? I don't want to go through the title of 700 and whatever episodes to try to find. What was that episode yeah. they did on this? <coughs> you can throw in a few keywords, search and narrow it down quite a bit. Okay. Uh, if you want to talk to us, if you want to reach out, you got some feedback, something like that. He's Andrew at WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com. I am Jeremy at Whistlekick.com. And if you want to support us, Patreon, Whistlekick.com slash family. Maybe tell somebody about one of our episodes. I think that's it. Yeah. yeah. So until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and, and have, have a great, great day. day.